the most fascinating career ever, the most interesting profession of them all. If you ask me, that sounds like quite a brave statement. However, let me elaborate on that. And also let me give you the answer to that question right away. First of all, so the question is, is clinical psychology one of the most, maybe the most interesting and fascinating careers ever? The answer is, in my opinion, because I don't want to bullshit you with these kind of yes and no. So in my opinion, the answer is yes, it is. And let me give you a couple of reasons for it. The field of clinical psychology and even psychology has become insanely popular over the last decades and years. We have seen amazingly, insanely capable and men and women who pushed into that field and made it more popular and more famous even, right? We see YouTube lectures online on that particular field. We've seen many, many students, like quite a spike in terms of like, um, quite a spike when it comes to applications for the field of psychology and also clinical psychology. And there are good reasons for that. Another point is, you have to think about how crazy that is. For the first time, we live through an era in our human lifetime where clinical psychologists almost face a cult of personality. We have like pop stars and movie gods and rock stars. And now we literally have clinical psychologists become famous, popular, almost like celebrities. It has become cool, like a, quite a nice image to it, right? You're badass if you're a clinical psychologist now. I'm pretty sure many of you guys have probably already seen this guy. It's like people aren't so thrilled about you at that point. It's like, what the hell have you been doing for the last 10 years? Well, I'm just as clueless as I was when I was 22. Right. That's Jordan Peterson himself, a clinical psychologist and lecturer with a YouTube channel that is amazingly popular with, I think, like 2 million subscribers or something. So these people, and it's certainly worthwhile watching. It's interesting to listen to them. They have something to say. They've spent like decades in their field. And that leads me to the second crucial aspect on why it is rewarding and one of the most fascinating careers you could ever pick, basically. And the second reason is it is very rewarding. And let me let me tell you why that is. This is a field head, and that's always what fascinates me about it. It is something where you literally, where you go into the human behavior and the aspects of human nature and their mental disorders and everything comparably deep. Like you really spend time with your, for example, your patient, therapist, patient interaction, or as part of your academic lectures, and you really make an effort to genuinely understand something at a rather complex level, right? You're looking at a higher level education that deals with complex human psychology, right? That is very interesting. This is not something trivial. You spend a decent amount of time, years, decades, to understand the human nature, how a person is wired, how their mental disorders are structured, what you can do, how you can treat those, and how you can diagnose and, and assess those, basically, right? It's a very interesting and rewarding field. And also, that brings me to one more aspect here. Uh, in terms of the personality trait that would, would, would at least be helpful to have when it comes to clinical psychology. The trait I'm talking about is patience. It's your lack of patience. Yes, as a very impatient person, I have to say it. And I'm not necessarily referring to the academic path that it takes to get there. Obviously, it takes years to even get to the position of being a clinical psychologist, I'll share something of that in a minute, but I'm not referring to that right now. I mean, like being patient because ultimately you might end up even in your academic research, which is a big part, and you want to become very, at least that's my standard, like you want to become very, very good in your field or patients when it comes to like, hey, working with people, like, for example, as part of psychotherapy, you want to be patient because you generally have to listen to the person. You have to be receptive enough. You have to be reflective enough to understand what they are currently dealing with and how to best approach those behavioral deviations, those things that they are dealing with, the emotional stress, right? So being patient certainly helps to become good at the field to first of all, enter the field successfully and then become as good as you possibly can. So these are all very good reasons for it, right? So uh, yeah, patience is a good trait to accomplish all that. Okay, great. So we know it's cool. We know it has a good image to it probably. 
it's rewarding. That's all. Like, that's all good, man. I'm still missing the part of like, what is cl clinical psychology? Even like, what what the hell do you do as a clinical psychologist? Like, let me give you the answer. And, hey, like, basically in a nutshell, clinical psychology is basically the field within psychology that deals with the human behavior and the human being in a clinical context. So, so let me tell you this. First of all, clinical psychology is basically the field within psychology that deals with the human being or the human behavior in a clinical context. That's from anything from like testing, diagnosing, assessing, and even treating or preventing mental disorders or mental illness. That's basically in a very easy explanation what clinical psychology is. However, I also want to give you a very brief overview on the different fields you may be able to specialize in. These are very interesting fields. At a high level, there are, obviously there are many, many different fields and there's not one way to achieve that. There are multiple ways, which is great because not everyone is designed to go that, you know, straight path to success. So uh, a couple of like core fields that are important to mention here that are interesting. First of all, epidemiology. It's a long word, but in easy terms, it's basically like the treatment or the development of a of a mental disorder over the course of the time, right? So the time aspect is really the crucial part when it comes to epidemiology. The second part is more of a, like a somatic aspect to it, right? So you have the kind of the more the psychological somatic kind of interaction here. Uh, to give you a good example of what you may be dealing with in that particular field. Uh, for example, if a person faces like severe emotional stress, negative stress, such as distress, ultimately having a raise in concentration of cortisol hormones, for example, right? Then this emotional stress would usually affect your body as well. At least if you face that over the course of a certain time, right? There you have the epidemiology part in as well. And then you kind of want to understand how does that affect your body? How does your how does your behavior maybe affected by that? Do you go through physical pain even, right? Very, very common field. And also we live in such a complex society. This is a increasingly popular field to understand the somatic side when it comes to the clinical environment, the clinical psychology environment, really, right? You want to understand how do certain psychological phenomena, how do mental disorders and illness affect your body and your mental and also physical health, right? So that's the second aspect that the, the core field, I would say. A third one would probably be more to the medical side of it, right? So like, uh, uh, for example, neuro neurological injuries, that could be a field, right? Um, you're not dealing with it from a psychiatric point of view. However, neurological injuries may also affect obviously your behavior. Uh, you want to understand like the behavioral deviations that you may face in your daily lives. If, if there's anything wrong, like you have any neurological injury based on an actual accident, for example, right? So that's something that a clinical psychologist could be dealing with as well, like assessing that, doing the testing and the research, right? The whole diagnostics part of the medical, like the, the neurological injuries, right? And then ultimately, for example, ending up in a psychotherapy, that could be an option as well, right? Talking about psychotherapy, by the way, this is a very interesting field as well. Note that this takes at least another additional training and you to get your license, depending on where you live, to then work as a psychotherapist. It's a very interesting field, though, and that's because you really have to have therapist, patient, therapist, client interaction. You basically align towards one particular goal, such as reducing symptoms or even um, changing mental and behavioral structures, right? Again, over the course of the time with a certain frequency in it. One thing that is very important to mention at this point is um, psychiatry is not part of clinical psychology, right? Psychiatry, this is one of the most common questions I feel. Like what's the difference between a clinical psychologist and a psychiatrist? The easiest difference here is a clinical psychologist has gone through the, the, let's say the psychological academic path, like studying undergrad psychology, then a master's or the doctorate in, in clinical psychology. And the psychiatrist is an actual physician. He studied medicine. And the key difference is that a psychiatrist can basically prescribe medication and a clinical, clinical psychologist, they either cannot at all 
or just limited depending on, for example, in the US, it depends a little bit on your state, right? But you have to get that license and then in a limited way, you may be able to prescribe medication. But generally speaking, the psychiatrist, his, the physician, had he or she will be able to prescribe medication. A clinical psychologist, they don't. They focus on the assessment, either on the academic research, the, the assessment, the diagnostics, and the counseling with the person one-on-one, or the psychotherapy, as we just mentioned it, right? Uh, so a couple of quite interesting fields. Also, let's briefly get into how do you even become a clinical psychologist? I know how to even become a clinical psychologist. I mentioned in the beginning that patience is a helpful trait. First of all, an undergraduate degree in psychology would be helpful. Surprise. Yeah, let me tell you this about the undergraduate degree. Make sure, it sounds so obvious, but try to aim as good as you possibly can as for the grades. So a, depending on where you live, a first or a two one equivalent in terms of the grades would be very helpful because if you accomplish that, you can basically choose to go for the doctorate degree right after and that's what you need to become a clinical psychologist. That will also be combined with a certain clinical experience in certain different facilities. You can go for the clinical experience. You need that. And it's certainly an interesting part of, of, of the whole, of the whole academic, academic route here. Uh, also, once you end up in the doctorate part of your clinical psychology career, you can be sure that you'll be focusing more on the academic research. You'll be publishing papers. You'll be working on papers and research. Uh, that's nothing to scare away. So once you finish your doctorate, uh, your doctorate part, your doctorate degree, uh, you have your clinical experience and then you get the license and you will ultimately going to be able to work as a clinical psychologist, right? Uh, so it's a long way. Roughly speaking, you're talking about like at least seven years to 12 years of higher academic education. 75 years later. However, one thing that's very important to me, like what if you cannot really make up your mind or decide on uh, can you really follow through? Do you have the perseverance and even the passion and enthusiasm to go through all that freaking 10 years average, right? The here, I, I don't want to talk too much about like, can you do it or can you not do it? But I will be doing, I will making another video on what you could actually do when you kind of like decide to, to make a cut, not follow through with your clinical psychology career and kind of switch your careers maybe even, right? A clinical psychology career, can even be nicely leveraged if you stop at your master's degree, for example, or even within, right? So don't worry too much about the fact that, oh, what if I don't follow through with the doctorate or the PhD or the even the license and the clinical experience? Don't I would almost say don't worry too much about it because if you generally have a passion for the field or you feel you may, may have a passion for it, like go for it. It's I think it's worth it and it's rewarding as well, right? As I said, Um one, one one more differentiation, by the way, if you fail to have that two one undergraduate degree, right? If you fail to have that first, there are still ways to do it. Like then you want to go for a master's in psychology, right? A master's degree and specify on clinical psychology. By the way, one advice, if you choose to go for a undergrad psychology and then master's, I highly recommend that you already check out your degree, like your particular program, because you want to make sure that it has some sort of clinical modules in it already. I say this because there are some universities and programs, they offer psychology and a Bachelor of Science, but they don't really include the clinical psychology part. May not even be, like it may not even be like a no-no, but it should definitely be in there, right? Make sure that's in. And in your master's, you can still decide to like where you want to specify or at least the latest as part of your doctorate degree. Right. Lastly, to end this, I want to share a very important and interesting tip for you. It should be valuable for sure. This is something that comes from my business background of running a business and like being a decent in networking. I would, I would say like regard, this applies to you regardless of whether you're just starting out with your psychology degree or whether you're like right within your master's or doctorate program, or if you even studied, like even started out at a very early stage working as a clinical psychologist. This tip is start networking as good as you possibly can. Because as I mentioned in the beginning, there's not like, there may not necessarily be just one way to accomplish your goal of becoming a clinical psychologist. Uh, the clinical experience that varies from facility and university to university, right? Uh, you have to build connections, like start that. It can be very rewarding. I know a bunch of people 
who achieved their academics has on an insanely top level and it was not the straight A part. It was not the first grade part, but they were very good networkers, right? So make sure to really hone that skill, like train and practice that skill. Like here's my very specific advice on how to do it if you're interested in clinical psychology. Like go on LinkedIn or sign up for freaking LinkedIn if you don't have it yet. Highly, highly recommend it. Like look for the people in your field at universities who are clinical psychologists working as clinical psychologists. Contact them. Make sure it's not like a sales approach because very busy and top level people, they get these messages all day long, right? Maybe even a question, subject line, question, question on your field, question on clinical psychology, like, and then you want to go just genuinely write them what you want to know, like ask people, like have the audacity to reach out to the people that are already working to that. And fields like clinical psychology, I feel that this is even more important in those particular fields to build a network. And even if you cannot leverage the network, you're at least going to be able to access valuable information on how to leverage your career, how to get into the clinical uh, experience, how to get into the clinical facilities, for example, like do that, go on LinkedIn and connect with the people slowly but surely with the people that may be of value to you. That's pretty much it. I hope this was really valuable. If you have any comments or questions, like feel free to leave that in the comments below. Also, make sure to subscribe and I will let you know why you should subscribe. What's in for you? You should subscribe because since this channel is so new, right? We, we, we want to grow this so I can provide more value to you. And since this is such a new channel, every subscription will be disproportionately, in, yeah, like will disproportionately influence on where I can go with the direction of the channel, right? So you have a you have a nice impact right now. Let me know what you're up for. Subscribe so I know what the next things can be. Also, like a little disclaimer, maybe in the next video, I will show you, even if you kind of cut your degree and you decide not to go for the whole way of becoming a clinical psychologist, if you decide to like uh, to drop out or anything like that, I will let you know in a world that is AI and data driven, where data scientist is kind of the hardest, the hardest uh, occupation you could ever have besides clinical psychology, of course. Uh, how do you find your spot? I will let you know about fields that will remain insanely significant in the future too, right? That will be in the next video. And regardless of whether it's a psychological background or even another academic background, I will let you know how to like leverage and transition your career, even if you have not successfully followed through all the way to your PhD doctorate program or whatever. That's it for you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your support. And yeah, have a nice day, evening or night. Take care.